now we want to look at the money market okay so since we, since we have discussed um, uh, the relationship between interest rate and total demand for money so we know that the total demand for money is a function of two variables income and interest rate so if we specifically look at the relationship between total demand for money and interest rate we know that the demand the total demand for money is downward sloping okay so if interest rate goes up by one unit the demand for money will go down by c2 okay negative relationship so in the money market we can draw uh, the the demand for money which is a downward sloping because r is negative however since the demand for money is a function of both income and interest rate in this framework we are only measuring the relationship between money and interest rate so this demand for money curve is is unique okay it is only for this specific level of income y0 okay so basically we will have to draw different demand for money for different level of income okay if income goes up we know that you know if income goes up then that will shift the demand curve for money up okay why because y is positive okay y has a positive influence on the demand for money while money supply is exogenous okay we know that money supply is being decided by the central bank and the central bank simply decide how much money to be supplied we just simply going to assume that central bank will simply decide money supply and and the decision is independent of interest rate okay they will not refer to interest rate basically whatever amount that they decided to print so they will just print okay so that's explain why we have a vertical supply of money Especially, I mean, that will be true in, in the short run, especially. I mean, whatever money that has been printed, I mean, like, we can only have that amount of money, okay? So, this, the intersection between the, the supply, the money supply and money demand will then, uh, you know, give us the equilibrium interest rate at R0 and equilibrium quantity of money at M star 0, okay? So, now let's see what happened if the central bank then decided to, to increase money supply, okay? So, let's say central bank decided to increase money supply okay so now when central bank increase money supply the supply curve the, su the the money supply curve will then shift to the right okay so from ms0 to ms1 okay. when central bank increase money supply the money supply curve will then shift to the right okay at the old interest rate r0 we can see that there is an excess supply of money okay interest rate is high the supply of money is here but the demand for money is only here Okay, so basically what happens here is that individual consumers, uh, uh, investors, okay, since the interest rate is high, they would rather hold bonds, okay, like, you know, it would be more profitable to hold bonds because bonds will then pay interest rate, you know, interest rate is high, so you expect interest rate to go down, when interest rate goes down, you expect to get a capital gain, okay, so that's why, you know, the demand for money is low, while the supply of money is high, so now this is, this will create a pressure on the interest rate to go down, okay. So this create a pressure on interest rate to go down. As interest rate goes down, the demand for money will go up. Okay, now people would 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 want to hold more money, kind of. You know, the, the there'll be an increase. So some of the investors will will the interest rate will, be, will rather be lower than the normal interest rate or the lower than the critical value to some of them because remember each individual investor will have different uh, level of uh, the normal interest rate so as interest rate goes down demand for money will go up so this adjustment will go on and on until the interest rate goes down uh, down to r1 okay the new intersection between money demand and money supply so the demand for money now will 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 go up okay as we move to the right more and more money being demanded so we have a new equilibrium at r1 and M1 star, lower interest rate, more money equilibrium. Now, is this is this story complete? I mean, like when central bank, you know, uh, simply you know increase uh, money supply, uh, so you know all these thing adjustment takes place. So you know investment, I'm um, sorry, uh, the demand for money will will go down. So we have a new intersection, new equilibrium with a lower interest rate and greater quantity of money. So is this is is this story complete? No. Okay. Why? Because we know that from our previous discussion when we look at all these links. Okay. So we know that when so now from this story we know that interest rate has gone down. Okay. When interest rate you know goes down, you know output will then have to change. Right? I mean, like when interest rate goes down, you know, investment will, will go up. Okay? One of the components okay, of, of aggregate demand uh, investment will then go up. Okay? So, lower interest rate okay, will then translate into higher, higher income. 
And the problem here now become complicated because income now is in, in the function, in, in the money demand function. So when Y goes up, then the demand for money will also have to go up. Okay? So the story doesn't end here. We need to use a more, uh, like a, a, a more complete framework in order to explain this event. Okay? This event, so we need, we need a better uh, framework that really look at all these different markets. Okay? And that will bring us to the discussion of the ISLM framework model. The ISLM model framework okay, will be discussed, I don't know, maybe in, in the class or maybe in, in another video. Okay? So uh, thanks for watching. I hope you, know, you, you understand um, all the concepts, uh, the analysis that we did. If you have any questions, you, know, um, you can simply either you know, post uh, in Aitalim or send me an email. Okay? That's all. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi